What? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Worry about a hater? Not me. Not what? Me. Turn to the max. No sleep. Yeah. Smoke the honey joints to the face. Give a fuck what a bitch nigga say. Everything about me. About me. Everything about me. About me. Everything about me. Everything about me. About me. Everything about me. Everything about me. Rolling. Pocket swollen. Riding in it like it's stolen. Weed it, hella conceited. If it ain't about money, nigga, I don't need it. Got a hundred grand in my ashtray. Spend a hundred K on a bad day. And I'm tatted like a cholo, nigga, act crazy. My dogs go loco. Kush got me moving slow, bro. Yeah. With my nigga problem, that's my bro, bro. Yeah. Came in through the back door. Ten mil this year on a low low. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. And I'm your gracious host. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite Nasheed, also known as King Flex. Glad to have everybody tuning in to today's show. We're about to drop that hot fire. Today's show is brought to you by Colorful Jazz Art by Art by Rico. Go to his website, artbyrico.com, where you can get some of that fly New Orleans jazz art. And today's show is brought to you by the real Master P.I. Mac, Mr. Boss Hog Macaroni. You can get his books and all his information at Amazon. Go to Amazon and type in Kevin Derek Gentry. He's the iceberg slim of this generation. A lot of good game in his books. You can check out his website, becomerichfamousfast.com, or you can call him directly to get coaching at 248 248- 662-5361. Also check out RNA. That's the home of the $50 flyer. They design everything from logos to websites, the whole nine yards. Their websites start off at 250 bucks. Mention Tariq, though, you get 20% off your next design project. Call them today at 443-351-7725 or go to their website, RNA. PDC.com and today's show is brought to you by Case Ultra Fly T-shirts, some of the best T-shirts out there in the market. The new T-shirt collection from Case Ultra is called The Mystic Ones. It's inspired by ancient symbols and mysteries of the universe and blended with modern style. Sign up for their T-shirt subscription, get a new T-shirt delivered every month. You never have to worry about buying another T-shirt again. All the Mac Lessons users use the coupon code KFLEX and get 50% off everything on the site. That is CaseUltra.com, ladies and gentlemen. And shout out to everybody in Atlanta. Let me put on my Mac and music, ladies and gentlemen. Let me put my Mac and music on. Hold on. There we go. Let me get my Mac and music on. There we go. Shout out to everybody in Atlanta. Don't forget, everybody in Atlanta. I'm going to be in Atlanta next week. I'm doing a lecture in Atlanta at the Seven Stages Theater. Not this coming Saturday, but next Saturday, May 18th. I will be in Atlanta. So you can get your tickets now. Get your discount tickets. It's not too late at TariqLive.com to join me live in Atlanta May 18th at the Seven Stages Theater. I will be in Atlanta. We get there Thursday. This Not this Thursday, tomorrow, but Thursday the 16th. We'll be there. So all my radio people down in Atlanta holler at me because we want to do interviews. The people, y'all want to do interviews with me when I get down to Atlanta, hit me up at info at TariqElite.com. And again, get your um, tickets at TariqLive.com to join me. And we're going to have a good time tonight. We're going to chop up some real good game. The phone number is 818-850-5404. We're going to talk about this Charles Ramsey guy. I'm going to explain that in a minute. And before I forget, my brand new movie, The Eugenist, it's out right now, ladies and gentlemen. You can get it right now on iTunes. And as a matter of fact, when you get through listening to me tonight, I want everybody listening All my friends, all my family, all the listeners, I need you to go to iTunes tonight, right now after you finish listening to me, and buy or rent The Eugenist on iTunes. It's in the top 30 right now. It's doing very good so far. It's in the top 30 best-selling horror movies right now. And let's make it number one by the end of the week. Let's make it the number one horror film on iTunes. Let's get that popping. So again, it's only, I think it's like four bucks to rent. So it's not that expensive. So everybody listening, go to iTunes and get my brand new film, The Eugenist, right after you listen to the show tonight. 
and all that good stuff. And don't forget to get Hidden Colors at HiddenColorsFilm.com. And again, the phone number is 818-850-5404. I want to talk about, there's this guy named Charles Ramsey that's going on in the media right now, social networking. They're talking about the guy. They're talking about him on Facebook. They're talking about him on Twitter. He's being labeled a hero for, quote unquote, rescuing these young ladies who were kidnapped about 10 years ago. Now, I'm going to get into that in a minute. I'll get more into that in a minute. Because there's a couple of other things I want to get into before I get into that. But I got some opinions about that situation with the Charles brother. Now, before I get into that, I got to talk about DJ Mr. C. I got to talk about DJ Mr. C from the radio station Hot 97 in New York. Now, for those who don't know, people who are not in the hip hop circle or who, who are not abreast of hip hop issues... Mr. C is a radio DJ, a, a DJ legend, I would say. He he was DJing for the, the legendary Big Daddy Kane back in the day. I think he discovered Biggie Smalls. He brought Biggie to Puffy, and he's a, he's a hip-hop legend. A lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, but he, he's been in the game for a minute. Producer, yada, 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 DJ. But the thing is, for years, this brother has been getting caught up in gay prostitution scandals. And a year ago, he got caught up in a gay prostitution scandal. He had a um, he was getting domed off by a dude in his car. He pled guilty to that. I heard a year before that or a couple of years before that, he was also accused of doing the same thing. And now recently, last week. He was accused yet again of soliciting a male undercover prostitute. So Mr. C got on Hot 97 and tried to explain. And what he tried to say, he said, well, it was really a female undercover cop. Which I don't think anybody believes because that area in New York is known for having transsexuals in certain cities. The trainee track is well defined. People know exactly where the trainees go and where the transsexuals are. So when people go to some of these locations and act like they don't know that somebody's a a, a man or a woman or whatever, you're not being 100% honest with the public. Just like in L.A. When when our brother Eddie Murphy got caught with the, the trainee, the tranny, however you want to pronounce it, he got caught up. He said he didn't know he was he was being a good Samaritan. But the thing is, he caught this dude on Santa Monica Boulevard in L.A. Anybody and they mama knows that Santa Monica Boulevard, if you see somebody out there in the middle of the night, I don't give a damn what they have on. If they have on a sundress, skinny jeans, miniskirt, that is a goddamn man. That's all that hangs out on Sunset, on, on not Sunset, but Santa Monica Boulevard, just dudes. Those are transsexuals. They're dudes. Anything you see on Santa Monica Boulevard in L.A. is a dude, no matter what it's dressed like. So you know who's a dude, who's not a dude. And the thing is, with Mr. C, now, now, he said that he's not gay because they were grilling him. His his colleagues were grilling him on Hot 97. They were saying, hey, Mr. C, are you gay? He was like, no, I'm not gay, but I do have a problem with prostitutes. You know, I do be tricking off my money with hookers. And my thing is this. Either Mr. C is lying Or Mr. C is being possessed by a gay demon. If he ain't gay. I mean, sometimes cats just need to come on out the closet. The jig is up. I think there might be a gay demon. I'm trying to believe this, brother. There's a gay spirit possessing that, brother. So maybe it's the gay spirit that's doing it. He don't know that he's out there on that track tricking. It's a demonic spirit. So we're going to do like they do in the the white churches we're gonna pray the gay away let's get a little prayer circle real quick and let's let's get a little circle everybody grab hands let me put on a little um music real quick everybody grab hands we're gonna get a little prayer circle let me grab my prayer rag real quick for mr c and let me say a few words for mr c because we're gonna try to exercise that moist demon that's possessing our brother now everybody bow your head and say now walk away satan Walk away, Satan. 
there is a lustful spirit around Mr. C's booty hole. Walk away, Satan. Walk away, Satan. Remove the demonic spirit from Mr. C's heart because that demonic spirit is the spirit of sodomy. Walk away, Satan. Oh, I felt that. I felt that. The Bible says when Moses wanted deliverance, he parted the Red Sea. But now Mr. C is parting niggas butt cheeks and going in. Walk away, Satan. Walk away. Now, Mr. C, I see an anointing. I see a revelation. Now, when I say anointing, don't get affused with anointment. Walk away, Satan. Now, Mr. C, if you're listening, I have a product for you, brother. Hey, la, 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 boko, I have a product for you, brother. Whenever you get that lustful, backsliding spirit, instead of reaching for the KY jelly, for the low price of $9.95, I will sell you my personal prostate prayer package. It comes with holy oil and a cork to zip your asshole up. Hell a la boko sha. Walk away, Satan. Woo! Did you feel those miracles? No! Hell a la boko sha. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back to some music. So hopefully that that helped that brother out. And speaking, (laughs) let me get my Mac and music back on. Speaking of Mr. C, I I heard he got a new mixtape, a couple of new mixtapes coming out. Uh, One of them is called All Balls on Me. I can't wait to hear that one. (laughs) I heard Mr. C is working with a new rapper now. The, the The rapper has like that old school appeal. Um, The rapper's name is Curtis Blowjob. Shout out to Mr. C and his new artist. <laughs> also, Mr. C, I, I, he has a brand new mixtape that's coming out next month. He's working on it. It's called Get Dick or Die Trying. I can't wait to hear that. That's going to be the bomb. Anyway, man, so shout out to Mr. C. Get your shit together, player. All right, let, let's see who's on the phone. We got a lot of folks calling up. What's up? Who's calling? Yo, what's up, Flex? This is, um, this is Roger from, from New York. What's good, man? What's up, Roger from New York? How you doing, brother? Yeah, man, uh, I'm in, like, a midlife crisis right now. Like, I haven't got, like, booty in a minute, so, like, I'm, I'm extra thirsty, and I just oh. wanted to know, like, what do I need to do to get out of that, that third stage? Because, you know, like, when I try to spit the females, I come, I come off like I'm thirsty. Like, how can I how can I get the Mackis in me to not come across as thirsty, even though I haven't had booty in a while? Now, how? what's a while? How long has it been? Probably like like a year. Like, God damn, well you haven't you been in a drought, man. You ain't had no ass in a year, so I know you met your energy is way way off right now. Now what's the problem? How come you've been having a year long drought? Now is it is it that hard out there in New York right now? Are you what's going on? No, I, I mean like I have paper. And, uh, I'm in school, you know, I'm doing my thing. Like I go out and spit, but it's just like I can't, you know, really seal the deal and. and you know, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me right now. Like, it just seems like, I don't know if it's my energy, if I come across as being thirsty, but, like, I have paper, you know, I'm doing what I have to do. It's just like, I just can't feel the deal, and I don't know if it's something that will with me, if my mouthpiece is whack or what, but. Yeah, I got it. You, gotta, you might have to get some private coaching, brother, so we can see what's going on with you now. Uh, you you sound like you're just basically sticking to the same spots. You're sticking to some of the, lane, the same local spots and you're running into the same brick walls, it's time for you to kind of venture out and branch out right now. How old are you? Like 24, 25? How old are you? Yeah, I'm 24. 20, yeah, that's, that's what I thought, man. When, when you're around 24, 24, 25, that's a very pivotal point in a man's life because what happens is that you really got to change your game up at around that time. When you're 24, 25, okay. usually you're fresh out of college. You, you're, you're just now getting into a, a, a career or something like that. So you got to start hanging in different circles because when you're 24, 25, you still kind of hang on to that old circle vibe and the old locations and the old spots you used to hang around when you were in college. Now it's time to upgrade because mentally you probably are not still there in that high school college stage. And now there's a whole new brash of new niggas getting to college that you got to compete with. So you don't want to even compete with that. Yeah. So now it's time for oh, you to, okay. you, you got to start stepping up, competing with the 24, 25 year old niggas and getting on that level and getting around women who are on that vibe. 
You understand? So okay. it's time to get out the skinny jean stage and the. Um, yeah, I, I never. I was never into that. Like, yeah. I was never into. I'm a bigger dude. Like I'm not too big, but I'll, I'm too big to wear skinny jeans. So I've never really wore skinny jeans like that. Not, but it's just like I just like when I go to clubs. It's just like I. I think that I have a drinking problem. It's like I get super duper drunk, and then yeah. I just, I just my swag just falls off when I get fucked. Uh, That's what it's it like, is. Yeah, it feels yeah. like I feel like I need alcohol in order for me to have a mouthpiece. I just I'm, a, I'm in like a crisis right now. And that's what's throwing you off, man. I tell dudes all the time, like me, I've never, I've never been drunk a day in my life, man. That, that's oh. not, that's a crutch that a lot of dudes think they got to get liquid courage. And what happens is that the opposite happens. You get um, very, um, um, and uh, you get very. I'm trying to find the word, the right word. You, belligerent, you get very belligerent okay. with the women, uh, and then you uh, come you come across like an asshole. You you get too yeah. cocky, you get too arrogant, and it's it's not even yeah. a genuine arrogance. <laughs> then you get on some, hey, fuck you, you ain't That's cute. True. It get it, then it gets on that. You yeah. become you become a hater. So you that's true right so you don't want to do that man start spitting sober getting your real courage up get your real game up okay. get your real courage up and you're gonna be all right man because you sound like you got a good well, head should, on your shoulders man you feel well, me? i should i should i should just sober up and then try to use my mouthpiece when i'm sober yeah, because, instead of getting drunk all the time exactly because let, let's be real man you had a club talking what real female with her shit together wants some drunk ass nigga up in her ear talking dumb shit you understand so you got to look true. at it that's true look at it from her perspective you, you understand all right, man. Thank you that's for the true. call, brother. Have a good one, brother. All right, thank you. you too, bro. All right. That's why y'all need to come down and see me live when I come to Atlanta, man. I'm going to spit that hot fire. TariqLive.com. That's where you can get those tickets. And don't forget, y'all check out my new movie right now, The Eugenist, available for instant download on iTunes right now. Instant download on iTunes. But today's show, you know what we're talking about. I'm talking about the Charles Ramsey situation and I'm talking about modern day minstrels that's the the whole topic of today's show I'm talking about modern day minstrels and the reason why I'm talking about that again this whole Charles Ramsey situation now Charles Ramsey he was this guy in somewhere in Ohio I think it was Cleveland or Cincinnati there were these young these girls they were missing for 10 years I think they were being kidnapped and held hostage in this house and they were escaping from this house trying to get away and their neighbor, who happens to be a, a African American gentleman by the name of Charles Ramsey, he saw him. He called nine one one, and police came and they rescued the girls. And now, the media—they're kind of labeling this guy a hero, but it's a backhanded compliment. It's a backhanded compliment why they're labeling him a hero because the thing is, the Charles Ramsey guy—he he did an interview. And the brother, he sounds like a genuine brother, but the thing is, he's a lower income brother. The brother was doing the interview, and you know how they do black folks when we do interviews. They love it when a nigga's looking crazy. And, and the brother Charles, again, he seems like a genuine good dude, but he's a low income brother. The brother's hair's all crazy on top of his head. The brother got teeth missing, his eyes all bugged out. He's very animated when he talks. And now, you know, white folks, they're having a field day with this shit. They're having a field day, and by proxy, some of these niggers are having a field day with it, too. And that's what I want to talk about. Do you think this is a minstrel show, or do you think it's just genuine, honest fun? People are making fun of a tragic situation. The situation is all right now. He's a hero, and we're celebrating him. Do you think that's the case? Because I've heard some black folks say that on Twitter. Now, the man... Charles Ramsey, he's actually trending on Twitter right now. He's been doing interviews. I think he was on Anderson Cooper. He's been on all types of interviews in the last couple of days. They're parading him around. Now, and I want to talk to the black folks here. Do you honestly think they are giving this man all of this publicity because they honestly look at him as being some kind of hero? I just want you to think about that for a couple of seconds. Do you honestly think they're doing that because they feel like this guy is some kind of real American hero? Think about that. They are not doing that because this man is a hero. They're doing it because this man, he, he fits a stereotype that a lot of whites have about black people. The poor, coonish, animated shucking and jiving negro he fits that stereotype and this is why people are running with it and and lately we've been having a lot of modern day minstrel 
stories come out, like with the Antoine Dotson situation, there's this whole new thing now where there's a reality minstrel show going on. Antoine Dotson stopped a rapist from getting at his sister. They paraded him around like he was a hero, but they were really parading him around because he was coming across like a coon. This woman, Sweet Brown, y'all know who she is? I went downstairs to get a cold pop. They, oh God, there's a fire. You know, she got a rag on her head looking like a slave. And, and she seems like a nice lady, but they're not parading her around because she's some kind of hero. She fits a Mammy Coon stereotype. Another lady down in Houston was talking about some Kapuya. She, there's a hailstorm and I heard Kapuya. You know, all of this stuff, these are modern day minstrel shows. Now that doesn't say that these people who they're interviewing are bad. These are cool people, but it's just interesting that they go put the camera in their faces and they parade them around. Understand the racial politics behind it. I've always said black people, when it comes to any kind of politics, black people are silly. Black people are politically silly, and when it comes to racial politics, black people are asleep. Black folks do not understand racial politics. This is why black folks always lose. And it's very troubling when I see a lot of black folks laughing along at some of these modern-day minstrels that we see. Some blacks look at it, it's just harmless. Some of it is funny. Some of it is funny, like hide your kids, hide your wife. Some of that is funny. Even with this gentleman, Charles Ramsey, some of what he's saying is actually funny. It is funny to a certain degree, but it ain't that fucking funny. Feel me. Sometimes shit is funny, but it ain't that fucking funny. Sometimes when you laugh at certain things, some people laugh just a little bit too long. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes something can be funny, but when motherfuckers are laughing just a little bit too hard at it, it's like, okay, now you laughing at something else. Our brother Dave Chappelle said the same thing. Y'all remember when he was on, I think he was on Oprah talking about the reason why he left his show. He was doing a comedy skit about some pixies or whatever, about a... Um, I think almost like a minstrel character and he was saying that there were some people on the crew, some whites on the crew, they were laughing at it just a little bit too hard and he got uncomfortable. Look up that interview with Dave Chappelle saying this. I know exactly what Dave Chappelle is talking about. Dave Chappelle's a very smart dude, very bright dude. And that's the thing, sometimes when people laugh a little bit too hard at certain things that, okay, I got the joke but it ain't that funny, they're laughing at something else. And that's the problem. Black folks do not understand when people are laughing with you or they're laughing at you. And a lot of times, black folks, people are laughing at your ignorant ass. And you sitting up there laughing with them and they're laughing at you. You dumb motherfucker. And I'm being very curt today because it's, it's time for niggas to wake up and get it. The worst thing is to see somebody making fun of a nigga and he's sitting up there laughing along with them while they're making fun of him. You look stupid. And that's a major problem that a lot of black folks have. You don't understand racial politics. You don't know when motherfuckers are laughing at you. You understand what I'm saying? See, the thing is, you notice white folks don't sit around with black folks laughing about honey boo boo and shit like that. They hate that shit. You don't see white folks sitting around black folks laughing at honey boo boo and all of that white ratchetness they don't do that because they're they know better but black folks be doing that shit just to get accepted you think that they're going to accept you and that's never the case and again a lot of times you think it's just harmless laughter it's it's just harmless jokes but it goes deeper than that i want y'all to chime in let me see i got a couple of calls who's calling hello Y'all got don't mess up my flow. If you call up, man, y'all gotta say something. The number is 818-850-5404. Y'all don't mess up my flow. I'm trying to spit from the survival scrolls. But like I said, man, sometimes a lot of people think that it's just harmless comedy. It's just harmless laughter. And a lot of times it's not harmless. It's very it gets very deep. The whole thing about Minstrel shows, that shit started in the 1800s. You know how minstrel shows, that was the first...
form of American entertainment. Minstrel shows, white folks making fun of black people. That was the first form of American entertainment. Making fun of black people, that shit is as American as apple pie. It's ingrained into the fabric of this country. This is why these stories become so popular. The Antoine Dodson stories and the Sweet Browns, this is why they get 50 million views on YouTube because that's part of the American fiber. That's part of American culture laughing at the perceived black inferiority. And don't think that it's innocent. You think it's innocent, then when that shit get used against you, you're sitting around looking dumb. The minstrel shows got started in the early 1800s. I think around 1828, there was a guy named Thomas, a white man named Thomas Dartmouth. He was in Ohio, and he ran across a slave boy dancing. There was a slave boy up in Ohio. I don't know what the slave boy was doing in, in Ohio. It was somewhere around there. I think it was in, in Ohio, but it was a, what I understand from what I understand about the history. He saw a slave boy dancing, a little black boy dancing, doing this dance called the Jim Crow. The Jim Crow was a black dance. It was a dance that slaves would do just to entertain themselves and to entertain white people. It was called the Jump Jim Crow. And he saw a little kid doing this. And he saw that, you know, whites were standing around the kid clapping. And they were, you know, the whites enjoyed this form of entertainment. And blacks thought it was innocent. It was harmless. They were just doing this little silly dance to entertain white folks. It was a way for white folks to give them a couple of pennies here and there. It was a way for white folks to kind of be entertained. And if whites are entertained, that means that whites weren't going to oppress them at that moment. It was just a, a temporary satisfaction. You can get whites off your back temporarily. So you shuck and jive and you coon in order to gain favor with whites. Because in our country, blacks are, are political prisoners. So everything that black people do on a subconscious level is to get whites to be disarmed, to get whites to accept them, even temporarily, to get whites to be um accepting and, and comfortable around them so tap dancing singing shucking jiving that's the way to make whites comfortable and there was a little kid doing this dance like a little kid a lot of little kids would do at that time they would dance with white people the white guy thomas dartmouth saw this dance and he said wait a minute something might be popping here he was a, a struggling actor a stage actor so he painted his face black and he went around and started doing that same dance and he saw that white people took to that. And he started touring around the country doing that Jim Crow dance that he saw the black people doing. And this guy became rich and famous doing that. And that's how minstrel sto shows started. Then other people started to imitate um, him. And that became extremely popular. White people dancing, painting their faces black, dancing like black folks. And again, we thought it was something that was innocent. But later on... The name of that dance was used to further oppress us. They came up with Jim Crow laws, and those Jim Crow laws were used to keep black people legally subjugated because that gave the white society justification to keep treating black people inferior. If they're going to act inferior, they must like being inferior, so we might as well make the laws that will solidify their inferiority. You understand how shit works? So stuff is not as innocent as you think. You see all this shucking and jiving on YouTube and all of this stuff goes viral and all these people get interviewed on the news and then we look around and wonder why all the fucking black schools are shut down. We wonder why niggas get locked up wholesale. There is a cause and effect for all of this stuff and again, I like to laugh, I like to joke, but at least we gotta have balance and the thing is, y'all gotta speak up for the balance. If we can give props and roll these motherfuckers around who's shucking and jiving and talking all this coon stuff, you notice they don't really give all that type of props to anything positive, really positive and progressive in the black community. You understand that? So we got to understand there has to be a balance as far as that. Now with this Charles Ramsey guy, some people are saying that, okay, he's a hero. And what he did was heroic. That was good. He called the police and he got everything straight. And the brother did an interview. He was talking to the news media, telling his story. Now, let's be very clear. Even though he is a hero, that nigga was cooning. 
black folks, let me tell you something. And the great Paul Mooney said this. Coons know when they're cooning because it takes work to be a coon. Charles Ramsey knows exactly what he was doing. A lot of Antoine Dotson knew what he was doing when he was doing that interview. Sweet Brown knew what she was doing when she was doing that interview. Black folks, even on a subconscious level, when you get around white folks, a lot of black folks do get extra animated. A lot of black folks do put extras on their demeanor when white folks come around because that's the way to make whites comfortable. Whites are comfortable when black people are non-threatening and black people know if you shuck, jive, kind of act a certain way, white folks will kind of gravitate towards you. Blacks have been in this country for 400 years, so black people know what whites like and whites do not like. And black people know that white people love to see you cooning, acting like a fucking clown. So this brother, Charles Ramsey, he did put extras on the shit he was doing. He can be a hero and a coon. You can be both. He was cooning a little bit. Let's be very honest. And he said something that really, really was extra coonish. That uh, it, it removes any shadow of doubt of his cooning demeanor. This is what he said in the interview when he was doing the interview. He was describing what happened. Yeah, the girl was coming out the window and he was doing this. And I knew something was wrong when you have a pretty little white girl running into the arms of a black man. You know something wrong. That nigga said that. If you say some shit like that, number one, that's completely self-hating. It's self-loathing. And you know that's some shit that white people like to hear. and They run with that shit. When you say something like that, that's some self-hating coon shit right there. You can be a hero without saying some stupid shit like that. That brother knew what he was saying. He knew what he was doing. He knew he was turning up for white folks. Let's be very clear. Now, a lot, a lot of black people out here will excuse that. A lot of black people will, will excuse that because black people are like, well, he about to get paid. He's about to get some money. That's nigga coon thinking. This is why we have all these modern minstrel shows out here. Because a lot of y'all out here, man, you want to be out there cooning too. You co-signing that stuff because you would do it too because you want to shuck and jive for white folks too. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's going on, Flex? This is Embry 2K calling out of the ATL, man. How you doing, man? What's on your mind? I'm um, great, bro. Great, bro. Good show, man. I think... Uh... You know, I think it's definitely up to us as a people of color to be responsible for projecting those types of images to kind of mitigate, you know, the negativity and the cooling that we see in mass media. Absolutely. But, uh, hey, I had a quick question for you, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Real quick. Hey, I want to get your perspective on uh, what do you think about demanding a female get tested for STDs before you decide to hit it, man? I know, like, in your book, you like this, you know, 72-hour rule. But ever since I moved out to the A, I've discovered that a lot of females have a tendency to mess with cats who are, you know, on the DL or whatnot. Yeah. And so, since I've been out here, you know, the few women that I have met, you know, I've actually required them to go get tested before I even get sexually involved with them. I just want to get your input on that. I mean, yeah, if you, you that's, that's a, a good move. Then, yeah, I, I feel so. Yeah, I mean, at least you're being safe, you know, so that's how you want to get down. If that's going to make you feel comfortable, that's going to make you feel safe. I applaud that, man. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, and you do have to be careful out here because these women, they're dating all types of cats, man. So you, you never know what's going on. These chicks might have dated Mr. C or some shit. So you never know what's going on. So you got to be very <laughs> careful. You know, I know. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I noticed that it affects the dynamic, you know, of the relationship. The evolution of the relationship is it, the, 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 the actual dynamic is kind of shifted because, you know, instead of having like, sexual attention, you know, the things that come with that, it's like you kind of push all that to the side for the sake of, you know, I'm not going to get involved with you until you get tested for STDs. But, but, that, but, 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 that, but again, that just let the females know that you're being more, that you you're having thoughts about a serious relationship. So anyway, let me. I got to get back to the subject. I don't want to get too far off the subject. But thanks for the call, man. All right, I, I don't want to get too far away from what I, what I was talking about here. But um, like I said, when y'all again, when y'all call up and say I got a quick question, make the motherfucker quick. Y'all y'all go on and on and on about the same question. So when y'all say you got a quick question, make the question real quick. But again, like I said, man, a lot of black folks out here, they want to be in that same minstrel coon position. They want a camera in front of them so they can do some cooning and get some props and, and get get praises and accolades, too. You understand what I'm saying? So we got to be very, very 
cognizant of what's going on as far as that. Because there are a lot of black folks that are willing to coon, buck dance, and shuck and jive for a couple of pennies out here. And that's the problem. That's the problem. A lot of you out here, man, you don't mind being laughed at. Because the thing is, on a subconscious level, you have to know that these white folks are laughing at your ass. You have to know that. Some of you are absolutely cool with it. It's like you, you're you being in an abusive relationship, but it's like at least they're acknowledging me. You don't give a damn if they're laughing at you. It's like at least they're accepting me a little bit, which further perpetuates the self-hating image that a lot of black folks have. Y'all got to get your shit together. Whatever you do, go get Hidden Colors and Hidden Colors too. Get that tonight. Go to Hidden Colors Film. Dot com. Learn yourself, learn who you are so you won't participate in these modern day minstrel shows and you also will know when people are laughing with you or laughing at you because right now black folks, they are laughing at your ass straight up and down. Now you can accept that or not accept that. But the fact remains, motherfuckers are laughing at you. When they show shit like this and they perpetuate it in the media, they are laughing at you. There is no question about that. So if you want to decide to to go along with that, cool. I don't choose to go along with that. The shit ain't that funny to me. Because while you laughing, hey, hey, look at them, look at them. The same people who you're laughing at, they're looking at you the same way. Like, hey, look at you. Look at how you people are. They're looking at you like that. I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but game is game, people. Go to HiddenColorsFilm.com. Get Hidden Colors so you can get that game. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with your kids. Ladies and gentlemen, go get the Eugenist on iTunes right now. Go to iTunes right now. Order the Eugenist. Watch it tonight. I'm going to check you guys out this Sunday on Ustream. Get your tickets to join me in Atlanta at TariqLive.com, family. I'm a holla. Peace. A holla. Peace. Ahala, peace. Ahala, peace. Ahala, 